Hello, Facebook. It has been so long since the last time I went live. And I figured, you know, right now is actually a great time to be able to share. I've actually had several people reach out and say, hey, you know what? Have you seen Sound of Freedom yet? Have you seen it yet? And the Lord has laid such a heavy revelation on my heart. And this word, I believe, is for so many people. So many people. So type Sound of Freedom below if you've seen the movie. What was your biggest takeaway? I would love to be able to hear what your biggest takeaway was. If you're watching the replay, put hashtag replay and still share what your biggest takeaway was. But I know, I know that I know that I know that there is so much that is in this word. Um, I shared it with a friend just recently and she was like, Ooh, I feel that one. You got to go share that. And I almost didn't do it tonight. I almost didn't do it. I was ready to just wind down. It has been a long day. And I said, you know what? It's time because if not now, then when? So share, if you've seen Sound of Freedom below, type below what your biggest takeaway was. If you've just seen it, just type in um, Sound of Freedom. Just so I want to know who on my timeline has seen it. Um, but I am wanting to share something so deep when it comes to this movie, because I believe that somebody is going to hear a word here and it's going to get them into action. So I just want to say it feels so good to be going live again, to be talking with y'all, because I used to do this all the time. And the Lord has had me in this season of hibernation, spending time with him, um, building our company, helping women get set free. Um, and I'm just so grateful to be honored and um, I'm so grateful and honored to be in this season. But I want to share with you this revelation. Now, if you haven't seen the movie, I'm not going to give too much away but it's going to be just enough so you can really get what I believe is needing to be heard in this hour. So I knew watching this movie, this was going to be difficult. Um, I knew that this was going to be something that would tug on a lot of heartstrings. Um, for those that don't know, I was actually a news anchor and reporter for um, a number of years. That was my first career. I got into that to really tell people stories and I realized how dark it was. And we did stories that involved things like this. And I saw a lot of dark sides of people. And I even lived in areas where they said, don't go there because that's actually where they take people and they take them up to the freeway and the people never see them again. And you hear things like that, but you're like, does that really happen? So I'm so grateful that this movie came out because it really does happen. It happens everywhere, not just in other countries, but I'm so grateful for the fight that these producers, directors, everybody inside of what made this movie possible, just keep fighting for people to hear this story. And um, I like any movie, this is how I operate. I'm sitting there and I got my big old bucket of popcorn and my icy. I love being able to go in the movie and have those two things ready. And quickly I set those down and I was like, this movie is not enjoyable. This movie isn't something to be like, woohoo, let's watch it. This is a documentary really of what really happened. So I put that down. And for me, I'm like, what's a movie without popcorn? But this was a time where I just knew I had to be locked in and really hear what was being heard. And as the movie's playing, I'm seeing tears roll down people's cheeks. I'm seeing, I'm hearing sniffles, you know, and I'm also seeing people that are just chomping down on their snacks, just like it's any old movie. And, you know, I knew that it resonated with a lot of people based on just the energy that was in the room. And towards the end of the movie, towards the end of the movie, I, I got this strong feeling in my spirit. I got this strong feeling looking around being like, you know what, like most of these people are going to get up from this movie they're going to walk out and life is going to be the same old same. Nothing's going to change. They were moved in that movie. Ooh, it was a good movie. I'm glad that I saw it. Wow, this is impactful. But are they really going to do anything different? Knowing that we have a voice, we have resources, and there are causes that need our support. Maybe it's one like this or maybe it's another one. So number one, that's what I felt. I was just like, people are just going to get up and they're not even going to be changed, not even being phased. Because so often we get so focused on what we're going through that we can't even open up at all any room to be there for anybody else. But I want to tell you that it is possible. It is possible and it won't break you. There are things that you can do. So that was number one is like, wow, how many people have gotten up from these theater seats have watched this movie and nothing's changed. Number two, ooh, this is a big part of the movie that really got me. So there's a part in this movie where they set up a sting operation. They set up a sting operation 
where they want to catch some of these bad guys, right? So this billionaire, this billionaire, they contact this billionaire and they asked him to fund this operation. And this guy gave millions without even blinking an eye, just gave millions to set up this sting operation on this private island with this beautiful home. They bring kids in and without blinking an eye, this guy gave millions towards this. He was like, I'm, I'm in, I'm going to do it. That also hit me. This guy without blinking an eye gave millions. Does that resonate with anybody else? Like we have opportunities that are right in front of us, businesses, things that are right in front of us that if we put our everything into it and maybe you're at that place right now being like, should I go forward? Should I not? I'm nervous. Is it going to work? I'm not sure. And you could be that next multiple six, multiple seven, multi-millionaire. And you're too scared to take that leap forward. My mind went to, yes, Lord, I want to make billions because I know a lot of that wealth isn't for me. It's for what you want to do with it. And there's a lot of people when it comes to making money and an opportunity where, you know, we're like, okay, this is what I want to do with it. The, the cars, the clothes, the trips, the this, the that. Yes, take care of yourself. You should. You should take care of yourself and your family. But you don't really need a ton in order to operate and live comfortably. You don't. A lot of the money that we make is for us to be able to go towards other causes, support other people, the homeless, the singles, the widows, the, the orphans. Like there's so many people that need those resources. And I've always known that human trafficking has been a big issue, but when you see it painted like that, and then they have a character in the movie that's a billionaire that gave millions towards a sting operation, money he wouldn't give back, but he knew. He knew and he had faith that we're gonna put these bad guys away. We're going to save these children. And at that, on that day, they saved about 60 children. I was like, what is it? Like what I want to get to that point where I can just give millions and just be like, here you go. Great. Perfect. Next. Who else can I help? Who else can I serve? But we get so caught up, you guys, in the day-to-day -day or what we want that we don't see the outside in the bigger picture. And being in that movie, even though it's a movie, it's still a picture for real life that there are kids there are women, there are people that are in the sex trafficking industry that have been in there for some, for years, decades, or maybe even their whole life. It's so sad. And we can do something about it. Or maybe this organization isn't something that tugs on your heart, but something else is. But you not taking that step forward into that opportunity that was laid out for you to go all in and sure it might've taken years and it will take years for you to reach the income that you want to be able to take care of your family and give back in a way that is legendary. Why don't we think bigger? Why don't we have those legendary conversations? Like, why not? What scares you from having something so big that you have to partner with God to do it? Please let me know, like, what is that thing that holds you back? Is it fear of rejection? Is it what if I don't make it self-belief? Is it the people around you? Do you got to change your environment? There's so many things that I see from women and men all day long, but primarily women, because that's the company that we uh, built is to really support women to grow personally, professionally, financially. And the last thing when we were sitting in that theater, after he highlighted the billionaire part that he gave millions without a blink of an eye, wasn't going to see that return, but the return on investment was saving the lives of people he wasn't even connected with. It was a cause bigger than him and doing what was right. He worked hard for that money, but gave millions towards this sting operation. The last thing that was really highlighted to me in this was so many of you that are watching this right now are sitting on an idea or an opportunity that can make millions, but you're too scared to take that leap forward. You're not coachable. You're not following the system. You're not following the word and the guidance forward. You said, you know what? This sounds great. And I would love for this to happen, but eh, it's not for me. Or you might be like, you know, if it's God's will, then it will happen. But he's also, ask, also asking you to take the leap. There are so many people that are sitting on opportunities that could be giving millions of dollars to charities and organizations. Also, changing the trajectory of their family's lives, but they're too scared to take that leap forward.
Well, I believe in this hour, now is the time to be like, you know what? I'm going to put all those fears aside. I'm going to say, I'm not going to listen to those voices anymore. And I'm going to move forward no matter what the cost. I may look silly. This may not be something that will work right away. And guess what? Nothing ever is. You got to work at it because you've got to become that person that the Lord can entrust with those kind of finances to know that you're not going to blow it. Speaking from personal experience, the Lord has brought me through such a refining process when it comes to finances of what I, in my early twenties, what I thought I wanted to do with it to now what I want to do with it to be a legacy so much bigger than me. And he whispered into my spirit specifically, you will be that person that's going to be able to drop millions and not even bat an eye at it because I know I can trust you with that kind of money to do the work that I need you to do. And I talk with a lot of women every day that's like, oh, I want to give to this charity. I want to do this. I want to do that. And that's great. But are you willing to do the things that are necessary to be open and coachable, to get in there, to, to be refined? to even be laughed at, to even be doubted on, to, you know, you might have people that are around you just hating on what you're doing because they don't see it because God didn't give them their vision. But I'm telling you, that moment in the theater at Sound of Freedom, when he showed me this billionaire was able to drop millions towards this sting operation for people that he didn't even know because he, he wanted to do his part and be a part of something so much bigger than him. There are so many people that have that same dream, but they won't take the action. They won't take the action and move forward. And I I believe that somebody listening to this, there's probably maybe a level of conviction, a level of like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? But there are so many opportunities for you to press into that and to think so much bigger. And I have a friend in my life and she has this phrase, I love saying it. She says, we have a rich daddy. God can bring wealth to you like that, but it's the refining process to make sure that if wealth is something that is supposed to be in your life, you have to be the person that can actually do what he wants you to do with it. So often people get scared of making money because they're scared of what they will become. They're scared of what it might do for them. Not for them, to them, I should say. We all want it to do stuff for us. But money becomes the master rather than we master the money and tell money, hey, you're going to go here, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, rather than we're waiting for money to come save us in our bank account so we don't have to struggle anymore. Like you are in God's economy, you should not be struggling. And if you are right now, and you need to take a leap forward of, you know what, it is time to move. It is time to do something different because what I'm doing right now isn't working. So this may be too big for some of y'all. This may be way too big of thinking about, man, I want to just be able to give millions and not even bat an eye. Or you may be like, yes, I want to do this. But are you willing? Are you willing to do what it takes to make that happen, to go through that refinement process? Because I will tell you, when I was in this theater, like drying my tears and all, because it, it got me, it got me to my core. But I also walked out with some pretty righteous anger of like, you know what? There are so many people probably in that theater around the world watching this movie that are sitting on a multi million dollar idea or opportunity. And they're just like, eh, I'm not really sure. But you know, in your heart of hearts, this is the route you need to go in order to make those dreams come to fruition, in order for you to have the impact that has been called on your life. I'm telling you right now, now is the best time to press in because if not now, then when? What are you waiting for? The world's not going to give you that clear path. It's only going to get more confusing. Why? Because the enemy roams around here trying to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to destroy your dreams. And I see them, I see him doing that for so many people because we let him. But it's time to say, you know what? No, it's time for me to step into what I've been called to do, which is going to lead me to my inheritance, which is going to lead to a legacy that God gets the glory. And we don't have to consult our bank account to do it. Again, I don't know who this is for, but I know it's for somebody. And I felt so strongly to come on here because I tried to write a post out and I actually put that post in the caption here because that's all I could come up with word-wise. But the emotion and the feeling behind it, you have to get on video for this one. So if this resonated with you, like, Share what's popping out to you. What are you afraid of stepping forward into? You might be on this on this thing and you might be saying, you know what, I'm fine. I'm sitting pretty, like I got what I want. I'm good. How can you stretch that? How can you get uncomfortable again to go do something that's bigger than yourself? 
Or maybe you're saying, I'm barely able to make it, Molly. Like, I don't think you understand. Oh, trust me, I do. I understand on both ends of being able to have a lot. Where do I go next and have nothing and have it all stripped and figure out, okay, where does my faith and my hope lie in? And what am I going to do about it? I'm going to count it all as joy and be like, how can I become the best version of myself? So then I can be that person that I need to be. So God can trust me with whatever he wants to. So I can go out there and make that big difference. We are all kingdom shakers and difference makers. We are all a part of that if we choose to be, or we can sit back on the sidelines and watch other people step in the game, but it's time for you to step in the game. And I know you're watching this because it's time. So I just had to share those thoughts because I was like, this is, whoo, this is deep. And this is so, so good. And I know somebody needs to hear that because there is so much that you can do about it. You may not be able to physically go out there and save those children or physically be in the heat of whatever organization, right in the middle of that battle of whatever organization you want to support, but you can support financially. And you also, to get to that place financially, if you're not there yet, step into an opportunity that will get you there. And if you're looking for an opportunity that will help get you there, reach out. I'd love to be able to connect with you and share with we have what we have going on because it can create that unlimited income that you're looking for to fund the life that you want and the legacy that you want of being remembered for somebody that was so much bigger than just, ooh, look at their fancy this and that. Like they really got out there and made a difference because money brings choices. And if we have more money, we can make more choices and bigger choices and bigger impact for people. So I hope that this is landing on a place, a soft spot, a place that really like you can resonate with so you can be able to go forward and just go after it because now's the time. Do it scared, do it messy, go for it, be coachable. Like be willing to pivot if you need to and just know when you step into that purpose, enemy's gonna be coming for you because he doesn't want you to step into what's next for you. And we know that. So just push him out. Push him out, push him out, push him out because it's time for you to step in the game. He's out of the game. It's your time, game time. All right, I can't wait to go back and read the comments and hopefully you got something out of this. So until next time, bye everybody.